All right, this is a good question, um, this homework question, because it, it touches on something that I didn't necessarily look at uh, when I recorded the, the lecture uh, for this video, so, or uh, for this section. But um, when you go to solve this, uh, you can see first um, you've got the zero, whoops, you got the zero on the right hand side, so that's that's good. So what you need to look at is taking this left hand side and graphing it, um, and that's kind of a good first step. So I've done that here, and you can see um, we have three x-intercepts. You can see where it's crossing the x-axis in three places, um, but you'll notice none of them are really even. Um, and I can actually, I could kind of redo the window here to, um, to make this a little more clear. Um, And so this is this is what that graph looks like. Um, each one of these tick marks on the x-axis is one. So you can see uh, there is an x-intercept between uh, negative three and negative two, between zero and one, and between one and two. Uh, but again, nothing um, nothing really even as far as where those x-intercepts are. So um, the graph is helpful here in, in seeing those, but ultimately um, isn't much help. Now the next thing uh, we can look at is that um, rational zeros theorem. Um, where we take factors of the uh, the constant term, which is 11, uh, which you just get 1 and 11 for those. And then also the factors of the leading term, which are just 1 and 7, positive and negative for those. And you can make fractions uh, to get potential zeros. And it just comes uh, from looking at these as numerators and these numbers as denominators. Um, so we can do like 1 over 1, 11 over 1, positive and negative on those. And then both of these numbers, 1 over 7 and 11 over 7. Okay. Now we know from our graph, um, again, these are all possible potential zeros uh, that that x-intercept we had, those three x-intercepts, they weren't nice even numbers. So from this list, we know that 1 over 1 and 11 over 1, those aren't x-intercepts because they don't show up on the graph. We don't have those nice even <coughs> crossings on that, that x-axis. So we're left with these four. Um, and so one thing you can do here is if you actually divide out um, well, uh, let's see, 1 over 7 and 11 over 7. These are going to be fractional values, decimal values. We get 0.14 and 1.57. And you can actually go to your graph, and we did this in the, le the lesson, and calculate these zeros. Um, and so, like, if I want to look at the one in the middle there, I could say that's my left bound and then go to the right sum. So now I'm on the right side of that zero. And I get 0 0.41. Okay, so that's worth, let's write that down. It's one of the zeros there. Uh, and you'll see why this is useful here in a second. Um, so let's do that again. Let's go ahead and get all three of these.
1.57 and let's go all the way to the left for this last one. Okay, and then let's go to the right. And we get negative 2.41. So those are rounded, and those are our zeros. Of course, for the homework, we those rounded answers aren't going to work. we got to have decimal values. But remember, we, we looked at um, 11 over 7. A second ago, we said 11 over 7 is... 1.57, I believe, is what we said, right? Okay, 11 over 7 is 1.57. So we know that, that that on the list is one of our zeros, okay? Um, so this is now where you can do your synthetic division. Uh, let me do it with a different color here. with 11 over 7, which is kind of a mess. Let me just pull 7, 3, negative 29, and 11. Probably have to use your calculator here. Let's see how this works out. Bring down the 7. 11 over 7 times 7, well, that's just 11, right? And if we add those, we get uh, 14. 11 over 7 times 14, we can reduce that down to 22. If we add that, we get uh, negative 7. Again, multiplied by negative 11, or I'm sorry, negative 7 times 11 over 7 is negative 11, and we get that zero remainder, okay? So it's a little bit messy, but it does work. Um, and now, we can say that our function is x minus 11 over 7, well actually, yeah, times 7x squared plus 14x minus 7, or actually for this, we're not actually dealing with the function, we could say 0 equals, because we got that equation, right? Uh, we, we have found one solution to that. Okay, that's 11 over 7, and, and um, so we've got that. Now, the other two, um, the decimal values for our, we came up with 0.41 and negative 2.41, those aren't on this list of potential rational zeros, okay? So the other numbers on this list aren't going to work for these other two zeros. Now, to get those, um, those are kind of, taken into consideration or they're kind of hidden into that trinomial there. So in other words, if we knew what the solution to this was, then we could uh, find those other two solutions, okay? Um, and to get that, this, this function, um, we can factor a 7 out of it. Uh, but beyond that, um, we could actually divide both sides by 7. Just gets that off of there. Um, now, at this point right here, we can't actually do anything else. Um, there aren't two numbers that multiply to negative 1 and add to positive 2. If we try to think about factoring it. But we can use the quadratic formula. So we could say um, that quadratic formula looks like this. Okay, where a, b, and c come from these numbers right here. This is a, this is b, and this is c. So a is 1, b is positive 2, and c is negative 1. And so if we plug all this in to that quadratic formula, 
that's going to be the opposite of b, so negative 2 plus or minus b squared, that's 4, then minus 4ac, so 4 times 1 is 4 times negative 4 is, I'm sorry, times negative 1 is negative 4. 2 times a is 2 times 1, which is 2. And then that's negative 2 plus or minus uh, the square root of 8 over 2. 4 minus negative 4. And then the square root of 8, that's 2 times 4. We can take the square root of 4 and get 2 square roots of 2. And then one last step, we have negative 2 over 2 is negative 1, plus or minus these 2's here, 2 square root 2 over 2 will cancel out when there's that square root of 2. So our solutions then, um, we had 11 over 7 as one solution. That was that first one we got. And then here's our other two solutions. Okay, um, so that's how you would work that one. It's a little bit harder because of that quadratic formula that you have to use. And also just not really nice numbers to work with. Um, 11 over 7 and, and so on but hopefully that kind of makes sense um, and just know that <clears throat> that uh, you might have to use the quadratic formula to to get those solutions um, to, to figure that out so if you have other questions by all means please let me know